This is Photoshop Classroom in a Book for the 2015 release. We're working on Chapter 4, Layer Basics. This is going to teach you how to organize your artwork on your la different layers. You can create, hide, view, select different layers. You also can rearrange the stacking order. There are blending modes that you can apply to layers. We're going to do some resizing, rotation, adding gradients and filters. We'll do layers with text uh, and we'll do some layer effects. We're going to add an adjustment layer and we will save a copy of this file with all of the layers flattened. This is going to incorporate a lot of different parts of Photoshop. As you can see, the finished product has a number of layers to it, but most of this should be somewhat familiar to you still from what we've learned in Illustrator. After you've taken a good look at your completed file, I want you to go to the Start File. You're going to save this out as usual, and it's going to be 04 Working and make sure you include your initials as normal and we're going to save that. By the way there are two files that you're going to turn in for this lesson. One will be the postcard and the other will be the family portraits. The layer panel lists all the layers in the image of course and right now you can see that the pineapple image is showing as well as the background. Now the pineapple has been cropped so if you uh, turn off the background layer you're going to see that you have transparency back there. Anytime that we have a transparent background you're going to see this checkerboard pattern. You can turn that off if it really bothers you. There's an, a setting up in your preferences for that but it's a nice reminder so that you do know that you have uh, a see-through layer going on. Of course once you have your background layer visible, you won't see that behind it. We are going to make a lot of changes here. This is going to be a good lesson and it's one of my favorites. You will actually be doing a uh, project based on this lesson, so work through it carefully. The first thing that we're going to do is to put in a photo of the beach. So we're going to open the beach file. If you want to use the embedded, that's fine. It doesn't matter. I'm not too worried about it. Uh, we're going to create a new layer. So all we need to do is drag in the image onto the working file. Make sure that both of your files are open and you can go, oh, I'm going to, no, I'm going to leave that one, but I want to go to window we're, and we want to do a two up horizontal. Actually, I'm going to do a, a three up horizontal, or sorry, three up vertical so that we can see all three of the files. And all we're going to need to do is, oh, not with my crop tool, don't crop. I just want my move tool. And all I need to do is click on the layer and using my move tool, drag it onto the file that I am working on. What would I like to do? Convert. I am in a in camera RGB, my destination. I want to convert that and say yes. And there is my file. Now that you've imported your beach onto your pineapple, you can go ahead and close the beach file out. We won't need that any further. The working file now contains six layers. Some of the layers are visible and as we've noted before some of them are hidden. We want to hide the pineapple for the moment. Also hide the background layer at this point so you can see the transparent background. We're going to add a white border around the beach layer to create the impression that it's an old photograph. So make sure that your beach layer is selected and we want to choose layer, layer style, and we want to choose stroke. The layered style dialog box opens and we're going to select the option for a white stroke around the image. Our size is going to be 5 pixels. 
position is going to be inside. The blend mode is going to be normal. The opacity should be 100%. And our color, we're going to change from the default black to white. Say OK and OK. And we are now have a white border around the beach photo. Take this photo and bring it up on top of the pineapple. And now you can put your pineapple back where it's visible. We also want to turn on our text for Hawaii. And we can view our postage as well as the flower. We're going to reduce the opacity of the postage layer. And we're going to use the drop down on the opacity here in the layers panel and change the opacity from 100% to 25% or thereabouts to fade that out. Now we have a partially transparent layer and we can see the other items coming through. The change in opacity of course only affects the, photo uh, the postage layer and everything else remains opaque. This is probably a really good time to go in and save. Next we're going to duplicate a layer and we're going to change the blending mode on it. We want to go ahead and again hide the Hawaii layer, the flower, and the beach, which by the way I probably should rename beach. Just double click on the text and you'll be able to type the change in right there. So we're going to hide that. We want to right click or control click on the pineapple layer and we're going to duplicate that layer. Make sure you click the layer name and not its thumbnail. You'll get the wrong context menu. You want to click OK and duplicate. So we're going to have pineapple copy and we're going to use a blending mode on this. Blending modes affect how the color pixels on one layer blend with the pixels on the layer beneath them. There's a, a good section on this on page 83. Multiply multiplies the color, lighten, replaces the pixels with the ones on the top layer, layer when those pixels are lighter. Overlay will multiply the colors or the inverse depending on the colors of the underlying layers. Luminosity replaces the luminance with that of the top layer and difference subtracts darker colors from lighter ones. So you can experiment with the different blending modes and see how it affects. We are going to now select the pineapple copy and change that from normal to overlay. And you can see how that color change changes that image of that pineapple. That's the original. This has the overlay layer applied to it. It's much more vibrant. It's much more colorful. It has deeper shadows. The highlights are bright. And so the next thing we're going to do is now pick up the postage layer. And to make that stand up a little bit different, we're going to change that from normal to multiply. The multiply blending mode multiplies the color in the underlying layers with the color in the top layer. In this case, yes, we made the opacity lighter on the layer, but we wanted to stand out more over some of the other areas of the pineapple. And so now the postmark became a little bit stronger. It interacts with the colors. Again, this is a good time to save. Control S will give you your save. We're going to next resize and transform a layer. We want to again make our beach visible. And if you select the layer and go to Edit, Free Transform, you're going to get your control handles. You now have your transform bounding box around the image and there's the handles in each corner. We're going to resize and angle this layer. You're going to resize from a corner just like you would have in Illustrator. 
You're going to hold down your shift key while you're dragging, and we're going to drag down until the height and width proportion, which you can watch in your top uh, bar, is going to come down to approximately 50%. And you can watch that change. It's getting rather small, but we're down on right, right around 50, 51%, and that's a good size. You also want to get your double-headed arrow here that goes sideways, and you should be able to see that. Let me get this over. There we go. You can see that there, that I now have the arrow that is pointing um, for an angle, and we can drag this to a 15-degree angle, which you can watch on your cursor, right around 15 degrees. We're also going to change the position of this. You're going to click and drag this up, and we're pretty good up in there, a little bit higher perhaps, right about there. That's, a, that's fine. And make sure you click your Commit button, and then make your flower visible and you should look fairly close to the image in your book.